Welcome to Camera Shake Podcast, episode 124. The podcast where we talk about photography, videography, and anything that's got anything to do with any of that. And as always, if you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, uh, be reminded that there's a full colored video version over on YouTube. Um, so if you are if not satisfied with just listening to our sultry voices, then make sure you head over there where you can see us in full, um, I was going to say Canon color. It's not even Canon color. <laughs> it's just color. Anyway, if you are listening to the audio and you fancy uh, having to look, you know, move over to YouTube um, where you can see us in full color. That's it. Anyway. On today's episode, we have yet another special guest on the show, of course, as always. Uh, we have the Dublin-based wedding and newborn photographer, Epic Photography Podcast co-host, and by far, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. <laughs> Please give it up for Kathy Weatherston. Kathy, how are you today? <laughs> uh, I love that. The nicest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> this is very true, because we've only just recently met. Well, I actually saw you over the years, but we never really talked to... Oh, really? Okay. To the photography show this year. Well, I, you said hi. Yeah. I think yeah. you, you were probably walking by with Dave and that, and, you know, I said right. hi and that, but, uh, yeah, but I think this time, like, there was, you know, the, like, we talked quite a bit, like, so we actually uh, met properly, would you say, this time? Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Probably over a Guinness, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Guinness isn't great now in Birmingham. You'll, you'll have to come to Dublin now to get a proper Guinness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because I've actually never been to Ireland before, you know. No. Oh, no. my God. Put it on the list. Oh, it's, the yeah. List. Yeah, it's, there's some really nice places. Yeah, well, it's definitely. It's definitely on the list because, uh, I mean, mainly because first of all, I've never been there before. And everybody tells me that Guinness tastes so much better in, in Ireland, right? Peter would vouch for that. Peter Treadway. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me about this, um, and I think we had a conversation about this as well because I was quite surprised to find that that it actually does taste different. So that's you know, yeah, it's thicker and creamier, and mm. yeah, I'm getting thirsty now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the pub later. Yeah. I'm gonna try. <laughs> but also, you know, my daughter's actually half Irish, so really, um, so I, you know, I'll have to at some point make it oh, up. That's the right. You were saying the mother's from oh yeah, actually just down the road, actually, Bally Fermot, wasn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, go down cool. Dublin, lass. <laughs> yes, exactly. But you've recently, you've recently moved house. Is that right? <laughs> I'm not actually there yet. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. if, oh, you can't see the but oh, I was supposed to move a few weeks back, and uh, just the people buying this one is delaying it. So mm. long story, but there's no point in getting into that yet. But yeah, I'm going into the Midlands. Uh, plenty to photograph because I like as well as doing weddings and newborns I also love doing landscape mm -hmm. and uh, when you're right there in the middle there's like I'm like an hour from Sligo and, and like an hour from the north of Ireland a little bit further to go to uh, Donegal and places like that mm -hmm. but the west coast is like an hour an hour and a half you know as well so I have I'm after being on you know on Google you can have the save the little save tag once oh, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, that's getting more and more the, the list is getting longer and longer and longer yeah. you know there's so much I want to photograph and uh, I just can't wait to get going you know to get in there and yeah, you know I, like I love doing work as well like but I also love even on my days off I do photography you know what I mean do you do that as well like or oh yeah all the time yeah yeah, yeah for sure it's like an obsession isn't it <laughs> well it, it is an obsession but it's also you know I love learning yeah, that's just yeah. you know. That's generally I, I just love, I love learning new things and I love getting better at things. And I always think you know if I learn like landscape photography is actually a really good example. You know I'm not much of a landscape photographer and I'll freely admit that. Yeah. Uh, and actually anybody who's ever seen any of my landscape photography will absolutely attest to that. I'm really not you know, <laughs> but and of course you know, I love looking at landscape photography and you know sometimes I look at some of the shots that Dave comes back you know with from like yeah, Iceland and stuff. Look everywhere. Those. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you, you look at those and you're going to go, wow, this is incredible. Um, but, uh, you know, and I've had this conversation with Dave, you know, I always think like, well, I live like near Watford, everything's in London, you know, everything's very urban here. And, you know, I, I like a good little street photography trip now. Oh, I it, love you know. street photography. Love yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I don't really feel like I live in a very pretty landscape, you know, yeah. and... Uh, yeah. 
yeah. So I mean, that's but that's only my my perception because obviously people who come over here, you know, will will think very differently. You know, for instance, I mean, it's, okay, yeah, because you know, it's all new to them. You see, you're there yes. looking at it all the time, and it's exactly. all new to them. It's like, like I'm obviously live in Dublin just now, and when I leave Dublin, I'm just like, wow, wow, you know, everything that's around me. But yeah. when I'm in Dublin, and people sp- suppose from outside come to Dublin, and go, oh my god, like the street photography is great, and you know, you have the coast is great views and. But to me, I'm seeing it all the time, so I was like, eh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because so whenever I have friends come over to you know to visit, oh, uh, yeah. and you know they want to go. Obviously, they want to go into London and see the sights, you know. And I always think, oh my god, not Tower Bridge again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but of course, you know, I can understand this. It's you know, it's exciting. Because it's on your doorstep. You see, it's easy enough. But street photography, I think, is always different because you never know who walks down that street, and yeah, you know, I think you can always find the nooks and crannies that you know that have. That you've never seen before. I mean, you could walk down the street, yeah. you know, 10 times and probably see it differently every time you walk down. And as a different person that walks up, you're going to get a different shot. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, yeah, I just, yeah, I love street photography as well. So, You know what I've really noticed about street photography? I mean, I've, I've dabbled in it and, and really just for my enjoyment. Um, but the better you get to know your city, mm-hmm. the more you're able to make sort of smart decisions. Like for instance, if the weather is like this, you gotta go, oh, you know what? That place is gonna be great to shoot. Yeah. Or, you know, when it's like sunny, you go, all oh, right, I'm gonna get some awesome shots over there because I know, you know, the light's gonna come in from that direction and that's gonna be a great backdrop and so on. It's like the more you, you get to know your city, you can make these these sort yeah. of, you know, these these smart decisions. Um, it's always, you know, whenever I go into a city where I've never been before, I always feel like a tourist because I'm just snapping, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. happy snapper. But uh, yeah, like it's like uh, I was doing a wedding recently and there was a like a doorway and it was kind of black and it was on a, a street with um, graffiti. Hmm. So whatever way the light hit kind of the doorway, I was like, oh my God, wouldn't that be great now if somebody just walked past? Just It was like they were framed in the shadow. And uh, like if that was if that sun wasn't out, I wouldn't have noticed that that day. You know what I mean? So I suppose you could walk around and, you know, see places like I mean, there's one guy in Dublin and he does street photography. And Alan is his name, Verjac. You know, Verjac Paul from um, what was this? Uh, oh, God, that film, the old. I can't think of the, the name right now. It'll come back to me in a minute. But because I thought his name was Paul, but actually his name is Alan. But anyway, he goes around town all the time. I mean, yeah. it's all street photography, all in Dublin. And he has so many different shots. It's just unbelievable. And I'm always like, I'd be looking at his uh, street photography going, that's incredible. But it's only on the street. Like he gets people through windows and, but it's his captions that he puts with them. And I think the caption makes the image too. Yeah, you know, because certain images you're looking at that, and then once the caption is there, you're like, "Oh my god!" It just makes it more powerful, and yeah, it just yeah. has the best captions. I don't know how he does it. Well, I'm absolutely crap at at, at putting <laughs> captions. Oh, <laughs> I'm sitting there on Instagram for like ten, fifteen minutes, going, "What will I put in the caption? Like, what would I, yeah. you know?" Oh, I'm just so bad at that. Like, oh, I, I tell you, I tell you a story. I there was only one time when I entered a photo into a camera club competition okay and it was a shot um it was a shot of alcatraz island and it was basically i was underwater and i was behind alcatraz island so i got the island and the san francisco skyline all in one shot right and uh it was awesome i i loved that picture um you know and it was like very tightly cropped it looked i don't know i thought it looked very cool so I put it into a competition. Like the one time I, I let myself being talked into entering anything into a competition. Mm. Of course, you have to give the image a title, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, what am I going to call it? So I thought, well, I'm just going to call it The Rock. Because that's what it's, you know, that's Alcatraz Island. It's called The Rock. Right. Okay. So anyway, eventually, you know, the image came up on the protector and the judge was like, look at it and go like, I don't really know what I'm looking at here. It looks like an island and it looks like there's some kind of ruin on it or something or some rubble or maybe there's a construction going on and there's some, obviously some city in the background. I don't know. And I'm just sitting there. It's called The Rock. I mean, it's got the Transamerica pyramid in the background. Come on. 
I said, I, I was I was like scanning the room and everybody was just looking at me going like, what? And of course, you're not really allowed to say anything. You know, you kind of just shout out. I'm just thinking, oh my God. Oh, Set the ground open up and take the air. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to see that. I have to see that shot. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really enter competition. Actually, I'm not saying I don't enter competitions. I enter comp- certain competitions. Yeah. <laughs> like there was one in, now oh God, this is going to make me sound like a bit of a dip so. Uh, there was one in Jemison's and you had to kind of walk like this street photography. You had to walk uh, Dublin 7. And right. then there was like, uh, I think the winner, you got like a bottle of whiskey and your photo was going to go on um, like a postcard and stuff like that. So there was, I think there was five winners and I was one of them. So <laughs> I won that. There was another one for Samsung and there was a group of us brought into this. I don't. I don't. I don't know what you what you would call it. It's kind of like a plague, not a playground. It's like there's lights and there was like blocks and all different coloured stuff. It was like a real funky yeah. place, and uh, there was so there was a few people. They, they were all they were all taking photographs to win the mm. new Samsung. So I won that one. Uh, there was one in Guinnesses, and I won that one. And I got. <laughs> I got brought in and had a lovely dinner and I was treated into a like a little private room in right. Guinness's in the storehouse and mm-hmm. it was like all uh, Arthur Guinness's grandfather clock was in the corner and all his oh. books and, and it was like a tasting meal so you had five courses but then you had a different drink for, with each course oh okay you know? so I brought the husband with me but he was driving <laughs> Was like, I'll take all your drink. It was grand. And then we got we into the storehouse for more, but it was a good night. Right. Um, you know, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, all those type of ones. But I've never actually entered, I don't think, a photo contest where there's actual photographers, proper photographers judge. I don't know who was judging those, you know, to be honest, which I think the one in Jemison's, there was, I think they left the photographs out and, you know, people that were coming in uh, doing the tours voted. Yep you know, gave a vote for their, their favourite photo and stuff. But um you got a, there was a couple more, I just can't even think of them offhand. But uh yeah. yeah. And there was one photograph that people keep saying you should have put that in a competition. It was like it was actually do you know what? It was oh what day oh my God, today's the eleventh of October. It was actually this day in two thousand fourteen. Oh that's so weird. Oh. Right? It's so weird because this is actually the day I met Peter and Dave and okay. Shan, right? So there's, it was Scott Kelby's photo walk and right. it was in London. And there was actually a group photograph taken. Which so, so like we only realized this just weeks ago that in the photograph, right, is myself, Peter, Shan and Dave and none of us all standing. Peter and Dave are standing up, myself and Shan are on our hunkers below yeah. them. Like all together in a massive group, but we're actually there together in the one photo, which is really funny. Yeah, and you didn't but know each other at all. At we didn't know time. each other, no. But anyway, it was during that photo walk. Um, I went into the grounds of Somerset House, mm-hmm. and there was these water, you know, the water fountains that come up from the ground. Yeah. In London, and when the water fell, it the I was snapping. You know the way you always get different shapes. Mm-hmm. Well, when I came home, I looked at uh, the computer and I was like oh my god it was like somebody walked into a fountain I, I don't know did I show you this photograph when I was over there no I don't think I, don't, I think I you'd remember if I think you'd remember if I did yeah. so basically um, I'll have to send I'll have to show you now. yeah yeah sure we have to actually you send it over and we'll put it we'll put it in the video version of this podcast yeah, right yeah because even like uh, you know the, the Instagram the London page on Instagram they yes. actually put it up Oh, right. Okay. On, the, on their, they put it on their thing. It was featured on that. But anyway, it fell like a person, exactly like a person, All like right. a side profile. So when you zoom into the face, you can see like the eye socket, the nose, the cheekbone, the lips. Oh, wow. Then it had like what it looked like was ruffles on the neck. And yeah. uh, if you look at the side, that had like a shoulder. And so it looked, and a hat on top. So it looked like something from like years ago. <laughs> and, uh, and, and when I seen it like that, I put it up on Photoshop and Lightroom. That was up at the time. And I had a job to do. I worked for a South Dublin County Council and I went off and done a job. And while it was there, my phone was like ping, 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 ping. 
And I was like, what's going on? You know, so I came back and it was like over 800 comments. And yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, people are like, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like it. And it has to be photoshopped. And, and I photographed. And thank God it's in raw. I did it in raw because, you know, the way you can just put everything back and it's fine. So um, I was like, so I started screenshotting, you know, the the messages and everything. And just as well, I did because it was removed. And when I messaged you know, put them in a message, say, why did you remove it? And it says, oh, because we thought it was a virus because there was so much reaction. Oh, wow. Okay. From, from the photograph, you know. So uh, I have still to print that to this day, which I've never done. But uh, I am going to get it printed. I'm going to get it printed large. Mm. And oh, yeah, just say a friend of mine, just, just to give you the extra bit for this, a friend of mine had turned around and said to me, did you ever Google whether anyone was murdered or killed in Somerset House? Ooh. or anything like that and I was like no I never really looked into it so anyway she went off and did her bit of research so she came back to me and she didn't know the day I took it so she turns around and she says to me um, so she says what date was that and I says oh the walk was on the 11th of October and she goes oh my god she says in and around she says I don't know where she got the information from the 11th 12th of October there was a um, guy called it was a Ed, Edwin Godfrey Berry or something like mm. that I can't remember the exact name was murdered on the grounds of Somerset House and his body was brought to Primrose Hill mm -hmm. and there was seemingly two priests tried for his murder or something and they claimed he was innocent to this day. So, which kind of adds that extra bit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at first people looking at it was like, oh, it looks like a woman, it looks like a woman. And now I think it looks like a man because it has this drip coming off the chin. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like a beard. And it has the ruffles on the skin. And the, you know the way they all wore those old coats years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. But uh, yeah, I was going to get it done years ago. And somebody said to me, I can't remember, was it uh, with certain metallic print? And then somebody was like, no, I wouldn't do it on this. And I wouldn't do it on that. So I stopped the, the print of it. And like, I am going to get it sorted, though. I, it's okay. just, you know. Do you, do you print a lot? Do I? Sometimes. Only stuff that I really like. Uh, landscape wise um, I don't have many photographs yeah. I have one family one because I said to my kids uh, who hate getting in photographs because you know mammy's always out from all their life with the camera uh -huh. every yeah. school thing everything they're sick don't of, I know it. sick of being <laughs> sick of being in front of the camera <laughs> and uh, it was Mother's Day and I said for Mother's Day I don't want a present off any of you the only one thing I want is a photograph of uh all of you is together, the family one, and I want a proper one with a white backdrop. And so right. that's the, it's the only kind of, it's actually, it's it's still in car bar. I still haven't put that on the wall either. I need to get it framed. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think we should have more of our own images on the wall. Do you know what I mean? Do you print for wedding clients? Is that something you do? Oh yeah, well that, yeah, albums. I will right. do albums. Yeah, yeah. I always, I mean, it, they, they, I have different packages. So uh, it, there is a, just an all digital package where they don't have an album, which would be obviously less expensive. And then, you know, they can pick up to the first dance and then they can go, you know, the whole package and up to, or sorry, up to the dinner and then up to the first dance. Yeah. But it's never really the first dance. It's a few songs after that as well. <laughs> and it depends <laughs> if we're having a really good night, I just stay the night. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we, we, when we met in, uh, in Birmingham a little while ago, we, yeah. you know, we talked quite a lot about shooting weddings and yeah. stuff like that. And, um, and I, I found it really, really interesting because, you know, speak to you because you've got a, such a ton of experience with, you know, with, with shooting weddings, but also yeah. with, you know, with dealing with personalities and, you know. Oh, disasters of the day and stuff. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Everything from like a cake not being there at the venue and mm. a father's. Because uh, I, you know, I told you I was a barber before I yeah. was a photographer. And the father came in one day and he, the barber's was full and he comes back in and his wife was like, oh, my God, you didn't get your hair cut. And she's like. You can't, you can't, this is your daughter's wedding. You, you have to go back. Could you not just tell them your, you know, your daughter's getting married? He's like, oh, I wouldn't skip the queue. Yeah. And I'm there thinking, I think I, I cut someone's hair yesterday. My stuff might be still in the back of the car. So I didn't <laughs> say it. So I went off, went in and checked and it was. So I came yeah. in with my bag uh, of clippers and everything. I says, right, come on, sit down. I'll give you a haircut. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you charge extra for that? 
No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I, do, I don't charge extra for anything. Uh, remind me to tell you something about that, actually, in a few seconds. But anyway, uh, yeah, then there was another one where the actual hairdresser didn't turn up on the day. Mm. And, you know, so they were looking, as they were looking for a replacement, I got stuck in then and done the bridesmaid's hair and had the flower girl's hair. And so oh. I got in and start doing that. Uh, always have a needle and thread in your bag because the last one, the bridesmaid's zip burst. So I stood there and sewed her into oh, wow. a dress. Um, yeah, I got that. I got that. Uh, what was it? The, the cake. I got arranged to get the cake back. Now, the bride, if I, if something like that happens, I would never make sure to make it my business. The bride does not find out. Because imagine on your wedding day, like for something, you know, like that to happen, it could really upset them. You know what I mean? So yeah. you try not to let them know. But, oh, God, I've had. I could be here for another hour just telling you of all the disasters and yeah, things. But yeah. I'd be like, so yeah, you do step up because you, I do, do you know what I think it is because my wedding day was the, I, I, I'm telling you now, I don't think I have ever come across anyone who had so much go wrong on their wedding day that I've right. had. I mean, I've had everything go wrong. I mean, everything. Like from the wrong dress, the wrong underskirt, my mother locked the door with my makeup in it. Uh, my, I obviously done my daughter's hair, put it in curls. Someone took the ha- her hair out while it was still wet. Uh, my car broke down. My cake collapsed. Um, the the venue said, oh, this was years ago, that you had to sign uh, something for um, to get a bar extension. And they said that I needed the guards to sign that. Now, luckily enough, I did have guards, the, you know, right. two detectives that signed that off, which was okay. My band was late. Uh, oh. My honeymoon was changed because of uh, water, you know, contamination. And where it's like, oh my God, it ended up in Bali. So I thought when actually when I, I got to Bali, I was like, oh, this is great. And I mean, there was so much more. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I could write a whole list. That's only some of the stuff that went wrong. But uh, when I got to Bali and I was thinking, my God, this is brilliant. This is This is it. It's done. I will never get married again. I don't care if I split, divorce, I will never do this again. <laughs> but yeah, I become a wedding photographer, you know. Yeah. But I think I watch out for these these things, you know. But anyway, so I'm in Bali and uh, getting ready to pack up and um, I get a knock on the door to say there's riots in Jakarta and they couldn't fly me home for another couple of days. So I suppose it wasn't too bad. I mean, no. when we're in Bali, you're not going to complain yeah. about that. It's not the worst place to be. But uh, the reason why I chose a long way around is going to fly through Jakarta and across was because there was another route by Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. But there was, I didn't want to go through that because High Tack Airport was that. And I was only after watching a documentary on High Tack Heart Attack. Oh. And I was like, I am not flying through there. So guess where I had to fly on the way home? Through that airport. Oh, but no. then I came home and, you know, I suppose everything was okay from there out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think from weddings when, you know, Mine was so bad. I, I don't want anyone else to feel, you know, bad on their day. So I always want to make sure that it's as the best it can possibly be. Do you know what I mean? So it's like f- photographer slash organizer. <laughs> <laughs> slash barber. <laughs> yeah, slash barber. <laughs> but I love, I love weddings though. Like absolute. I mean, you know, as I say, Peter would f- photograph them with me and the fun we, we have is yes. just incredible. Uh, recently, I just last weekend, I photographed the dip in the nip, which is for charity. So it's all naked women running into the sea. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so it's a great it's a great event. But there was a girl there and uh, she was only after just getting married. And she had I says, oh, I says, uh, have you any sneak peeks? And, you know, can I see Do you have any photographs? And I'll have a look at them. She goes, no, she says, because my photographer wanted an extra 350 euros, you know, to see them. To for any you know photographs in advance and <laughs> and you know I think she said you get them within ninety days and if they wanted them before that and if they wanted sneak peeks it was extra on top of that I near I tell you you had to lift the chin off the ground I was gobsmacked that somebody but obviously there is people that do charge for that but I don't I just yeah it all comes with the package <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you know I used to do I used to have packages um for headshots. Yeah, you know, um, that's that's kind of how I started. I used to have th- the stereotypical three package type of a thing. You know, you have like a a low price package and a sort of a medium package, which most people buy, and then sort of a ridiculously overpriced, <laughs> super expensive package. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and that you know that worked quite well. 
what I found, and this is just, you know, from shooting headshots, um, I just, after a while, I just found that it put a lot, like, too, it put too many uh, limitations on what I could do. And so eventually I got rid of the whole package idea and I charge differently now, which, yeah. which works much better um, for me. But I know in, in wedding photography generally, um, a lot of it works in, in packages. Yeah, I mean, some people would just do the whole day. Like, I know, I think in America, like when I work with Stephanie in America, it's it's the whole day. It's, you know, from the morning all the way through, you know, to whatever the, well, sometimes nearly last dance over there. Like, it's because weddings don't go on as long. Like here, if they're two, three in the morning, they're still going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, do you know what I mean? Uh, and when I'm in with, with Peter in the UK, we would do maybe two, three, uh, four, maybe songs after and you know as you say if it's a good wedding sometimes we end up staying mm -hmm. uh, but they, you know, so his packages would be the full day but I just find when when you go to the meal right so the meal is probably about six o'clock by the time the first dance is that's nearly about half nine sometimes ten yeah. so that's like another four or four and a half hours later and so you're hanging around there and I know you might get speeches and you know so some people you know, which would say, well, I would rather a cheaper price rather than paying the full lot. And, you know, some people aren't as bothered about the first dance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so and now a lot of people do the speeches before the meal because obviously they're nervous and, you know, they can sit down then enjoy their dinner without, you know, having to get up at the end of it and have a speech. So you get the speeches. So we say, well, you're right, we'll photograph the speeches and then, then we'll head. So it's really only the first dance. So sometimes that suits people. Uh, but, you know, you've shot you shot weddings in Ireland, obviously uh, over here in the UK and in the US. Yeah. Do you are there any major differences? Do you, do you think between not only between the the weddings themselves, but also uh, between the ways that they would typically be shot? Oh God, yeah, yeah. Um, like one thing when <laughs> when I started the first time I'd done it in the UK was you know when they signed the register. Oh yeah. Like so I'm there photographing. Oh, decided da da da. And I got it dragged back. I just like you are not allowed to do that. That's a legal document. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, in Ireland, like that's the done deal. Like you just sign the best there. It's one of the things you do. You sign the register and England and Ireland, they're more or less sim similar. Do you know what I mean? There's not uh, too much in the difference. Uh, they, they they have a lot of, I suppose the venues would be different. I love when I go over to the UK and they have like a barn and, you know, so and it's just quirky and, you know, where in America, they like to do the first look, mm -hmm. you know, so that I have done a couple of first looks here, but, you know, but anyway, the ones over there, they, they would do the first look and, and a lot of the photographs are done then. And then they walk in into the venue and or there was one particular one. They walked in um, after getting all the photographs, they had their ceremony, they had their meal. And then the band, the music was on for a couple of hours and it was finished by 10 o'clock. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was like, Oh my God! In Ireland, this is only getting started. You know, the party's only starting. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how could it be finished at ten o'clock? You know, but see, I suppose it, it depends. There probably are ones that would go on longer. You know, but yeah, yeah I just they 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 do like to do the first look first, and you know, there's there are a lot of differences kind of that way. Well, the last one I did now was in Florida. That was um, a Hindu wedding, so that was over four days. Wow! And it was in Florida, and it was on the beach. And I was bitten alive, and I was... <laughs> but it was hot. But it wasn't too bad, actually. Like you know, I mean, I've also photographed weddings in Spain. I think the wedding in Spain was hotter. I think than the one I had done. Actually, the couple in Florida that the, they tend in Florida. The well, one of them I done was kind of later in the evening, so the ceremony wasn't until six o'clock. The only thing is about that, if you're going more into the winter, you're losing the light. Do you know what I mean? So because they wanted cooler in the evening rather than during the day. So is that, I mean, over here we have sort of a wedding season. Is that the same in, in places like Florida or is it just all year round? Well, according like when with Stephanie, uh, she says that because she wants, oh, you know, always wants to come over. Um, like when the when the photo walk was on and things like that, she wants to come over. She goes, but my busiest season is September, October, November. It's coming into the cooler months. Mm hmm. Because obviously, you know, in the dresses and the bride, you know, they don't want to be sitting in heavy dresses in that heat. So she, hers are busier. She's less busy during the summer because of the heat. 
where in Ireland we'd be glad of a bit of heat, like it's always bloody cold, like <laughs> <laughs> and raining. But then again, they they get married in the winter because it's less expensive. Right. You know what I mean? It depends yeah. on the budget. So in Ireland, it's kind of all year round. You know what oh, I mean? Right, okay. There is no season as such. And I think in the UK, it's the same, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, in America, you know, it depends. Then again, it depends where you live in America. I mean, the States depends what state you're in as well, mm-hmm. because, you know, the, obviously the, the temperatures vary in whatever state you're in. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know. It it's both, I suppose that is the case. It's just yeah. wherever you are at the time, wherever the wherever the wedding is. What country it's in? <laughs> yeah. Do Do you find this a uh, this difference between um you know people liking to be photographed or not? Because that's you know I think my sort of experience with wedding photography. I've only shot a, a handful of weddings. Um, you know, maybe yeah, maybe five weddings or something. I've shot. They've yeah. they've mainly been for friends and family and a, a couple of sort of commercial ones. So I have a, zero experience really. But what yeah. I've found. Was one of the one of the hardest things for me was actually you know to convince people to let me photograph them you know sometimes because you sometimes have the groom you know is like I don't know and then you know you have some some of the relatives you know who might not necessarily feel that they are I don't know photogenic or whatever you know and so that you know I always found that hard. Oh, you always get that, especially in Ireland. They hate getting their photographs taken. I just right. find in America they're they loved they love the more posed shots, and in Ireland they're more the candid shots. Oh right, because okay. they don't they don't want to be posed. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I give you a good one. Years ago, when I was first starting out, um, this a friend of mine had said, "Look, I have a friend. She wants to get married, and her husband to be doesn't want a, fo- a photo a photographer at the wedding." Right. So she's and she does because obviously it's our wedding day, so she wants a photographer at the wedding. Oh yeah. So she goes, um, "How? What do you think we can do?" And she wants me to take the photographs. So in the end, I met the girl. So what I did was I went as my friends plus one. Oh, okay. okay. So I walked in and the, the groom was there and we walked into the room and I'm just walking in with my friend Maureen and, you know, the, his kids are, with the, you know, jumping around in the bed. And so I, I'm completely ignoring the groom at this stage, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, I'm supposed to be just a friend that has a good camera, you know, right. that's it really, you know? So anyway, I says to the kids, I says, go asked daddy to put the flower on your top. So I says, here, put stand in the chair there. So I got behind the dad and the dad is there going, I'm taking the pictures and dad goes, smile, will you smile? And I'm like, don't mind Jim, don't mind your dad. Are you his dad? You're the groom, this is your son. And I says, yeah. I says, ah, don't mind. I just want some normal shots. I says, he doesn't have to smile. I says, stick out your tongue, pull faces if you want. I don't care. You know what I mean? Sort of stuff. So they started laughing yeah. and then we got some kind of relaxed ones in there. And then we went into the room where they were getting married and I was kind of jumping up to get some pictures and sitting back down and jumping up and because I didn't want to be up there all the time and clicking away, you know? Yeah. So anyway, uh, there's this place down the road and it, where it kind of comes with the venue because where they got married was in like an industrial place. So it's, there was nowhere around to get photographs. Mm-hmm. So you had to hire it for an hour. So I said to the girl, just do it. If we can convince them, great. If we can't, don't worry about it. So anyway, to cut a long story short, I we got downstairs and we, I just, you know, I was like, oh, should I just get one or two with the mom and, you know, family ones? And then I says, come here, I want to show you something. And I opened my, the boot of my car and there was a crate of beer in the thing. And I said, why don't me, you, Maureen and, you know, the wife, I says, why don't we get into the car and there's a, a place down the road half an hour just get one or two on your own mm. you know and we'll come straight back I says you look you'll keep her happy it's, it's only for half an hour have a couple of beers over there he goes yeah why not I says, you can always you can always uh, encourage an Irish man oh yeah there. it's a currency <laughs> <laughs> so anyway off we went we were in there for an hour we got so many shots and he was having oh. great fun because it was kind of a sensory garden so there was everything there there was like boats and there was like big um, chess you know chess things and oh yeah. there was just so much so then we got back and we were having the meal and uh, he'd get up and give his grandmother a bunch of flowers and then the grandma wasn't well so she went off to her bed and you know so she came, he came over afterwards and he says to me tell me the truth he says are you a photographer and I just turned around and says okay I am <laughs> I am I'm sorry I says but you wouldn't have done what you've done if we had told you otherwise 
You know what I mean? I had to find some way. And then he turns around and goes, oh, I just wish you would have got a photograph of my nan when I was giving her the flowers before she went to, to bed. I says, I did. And took a, I had my Zoom lens with me. There it is. And I showed him on the back. But uh, somebody that just hated, hated getting his photographs taken. So if you work with them and you make it fun and don't make them feel uncomfortable, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, so then like that, oh, for the rest of the night, he was like, here, get a picture of my aunt. This is my mother. This is my friends. No bother to him. But you know what I mean? I think you just have to make them feel comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's kind of lots to do with, with your personality as well. I think that's quite sort of, you know... Persuasive, well, I am. Yeah, persuasive, <laughs> but like infectious, you know, in that, in that respect. So I think, you know, that's that's a really important thing because um, i I tell you a story about my, my own wedding. Um, yeah. So when, when I got married, uh, it was the wettest August day since 1945. Oh. And so we had this, we had this plan. Um, what... Where we live, it's very close to a bunch of lakes. And there's like sort of an oldie worldy, you know, bridge that goes over like a little canal thing. And uh, you know, the plan was, you know, we were we were gonna get married at the um the registry office and then come back to my in law's house and then walk over to the lakes and have some pictures taken on this bridge, right? That was the plan. However, it was chucking it down. I mean, it was it was unreal. It was like the heavens opened and it wouldn't stop raining. So by the time we got back to my in-laws' house, I'd sort of I'd binned all of those plans of like, you know, going to the going to the bridge because you know I don't like my wife was just wearing a dress and I just thought well, that's not going to happen. And so the photographer um, that I had was actually a music photographer, and I knew him through a mutual friend, but uh, I knew him. Because of because of the band photography that he'd done, and I sort of, I kind of thought, I'd like to have somebody who who like shoots music because that's my background as well. You know, I don't know. I just thought that'd be a nice thing to do. Anyway, so um, I said to him like, oh, you know what? Let's yeah, let's forget about the bridge idea. It's chucking it down. You know, it's not gonna happen. Let's just do something in the house. And he just he just went, well, I'm up for it if you are. <laughs> and I, I just looked at my wife and she's like wearing the white dress. She goes like, yeah, I'm up for it. And I'm like, all right, then, let's go. So so off we traipsed. It was probably about like a, maybe a 10 minute walk or something to the bridge. And we got drenched, completely drenched. And of course, we had to walk, you know, across like a farm and it was muddy and, you know, and, and the mud stains are still in, in the wedding dress, I think, to this day. <laughs> but, but the end result are really unique wedding images there you go you know because we're completely drenched uh, it was chucking it down you can see the raindrops in the in the shots you know we had an umbrella like my wife was was wearing the wedding dress with wellies you know or rubber boots for those from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who don't know what I wellies, know wellies are, are. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know and it, it just made for like really unique images and it was really it was really um, the fact that the photographer was so up for it and encouraging because yeah. otherwise, you know, in my mind, I just binned that idea completely because I kind of thought, well, it's not going to happen. You know, it's not, it's not what I had in mind with the perfect sky I mean, and the, you know. No, but I bet you, do you know what? I bet you they're amazing. Yeah, I they're, bet you they're brilliant. I mean, I yeah. always say work with the weather. Like people yeah. say to me, oh, what about the weather on the day? And I'm like, well, obviously love cloud. You know, give me sure. cloud. Give me a cloudy day. Yeah. Uh, you know, because the harsh, you know, when the sun is out and all these harsh shadows, and you're looking for, a, you know, a bit of shadow or a bit of cover. But, uh, you know, it's raining. I says, if it's raining, just get creative. Backlight them. Get that rain shot. Get, you know what I mean? I mean, there was one when, this is when COVID kind of struck and there were like small weddings. And there was one girl decided, look, I'm just going to go ahead and get married. But it shook down. And I mean, heavy. And we went to one particular place and it was fine because she wanted to get all the family that was there in it. So it was about 25. So we did loads of group shots there and it was in a park. But they had this kind of um, gazebo and next of all started the rain. So the bus came and all the people got on the just before it came down really heavy. And the, the shots of them were in the gazebo. And she goes, oh, what are we going to do? And I put the obviously we put the, the flash behind her and we, we froze the rain. It got a beautiful shot and we got lovely, you know, got lovely reflections on the ground. And then she was saying about she wanted she's pity like she says, oh, it's pity I didn't get like a sunset. So I put the orange gel on, put it behind, you know, so, hmm. you know, made it look like a sunset and 
you know, so like she couldn't believe like it made it look like it wasn't raining. Yeah. But uh, you just work with it. You just get creative and you work with it. But I would love that. You know what I mean? I would love that muck everywhere and everything. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, you, so what? Go back. Sometimes people have clothes to change in. They could walk in. They could walk in and say, oh, yeah, OK, I'm covered in muck. But by God, did I have a good time? Yes. And my shot's <laughs> going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah. Where I had one bride who it was just l- raining very lightly, but wouldn't put the dress down at all. Mm. And had the inner arm the whole time because she wanted to keep it clean for the, right. you know, but like, so, I mean, you just kind of have to work with them now. But I would speak to them beforehand, obviously. And I would say, look, on the day, if it rains, are you willing to do this? You know what I mean? And like, say to them, look, if you just put your dress down on the grass and it's raining, you know, it's yeah. going to dry. It's going to dry. And you're going to get on the dance floor and it's going to get dirty later on. So why not just get the shots? And, you know, they're they're always glad they did, you know, so. So this, this really is the difference between a professional like yourself mm-hmm. and like it, me who's like shot a couple of a handful of weddings because I didn't know the stuff I'm talking to you you really work a lot of stuff out beforehand like you, oh yeah yeah know. I always have a backup like yeah. I always have a plan just in case yeah. the weather you know what I mean? and I explain it to them and I, ex- I show them the shots I says look if it rains this is what you can get do you know what I mean yeah and like I always say look if it happens that you know it's so bad and you can't get it and there's nowhere to take them you know if you want to get hair and makeup done, throw your dress in the dry cleaners, go out a week later, go find somewhere and who's going to know you didn't get married that day and get some get some shots. And I would just do that for them if it was so bad that yeah. they couldn't do anything. Do you know what I mean? Or if they just say if somebody booked a venue and they cancelled on them and they had to go somewhere else and they didn't have it where they want to, I wouldn't charge them extra for that. I would say, right, look, don't worry about it. You know, we'll get these shots. We'll get them, you know, even if it's a... Like, actually, my daughter's getting married in June next year. And she just wants to... You see, I think people, when, when you know, after the ceremony, they, they pay for these um, people to play music and, you know, food to go around. And because they're gone off for photographs, they're missing all that. So she's like, oh, I want to be back for that. So I don't want too many photographs. So what we've decided is the following week, we're going to go over to the west of Ireland and we're going to get wedding photogra- our photographs on the cliff uh, by the Cliffs of Moher. Oh, get yeah. our dingle mm-hmm. up at the Giant's Causeway. Ooh, yes. we're, going to find, we're going to find castles. We're going to find and spend the weekend. I said, just get in your dress. She, she's really good at doing her makeup and I can do her hair. Yeah. And we're going to get all them shots and like amazing shots. So I'm, oh, I'm saving stuff left, right and centre going, oh, I'm going to try this one. And I'm going to try this one. And you know what I mean? Obviously, we're going to get photographs on the day. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, because people are turning around, they're saying to me, are you actually going to photograph your daughter's wedding? You're not going to take a step back. But yeah. like, oh, how could I mean, yes, I am. That's it. Like Stephanie and Peter are going to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? To to cover it. Sure. But I can't sit there and not yeah, and take photographs. Yeah, it's really difficult. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. imagine your daughter gets married and you're sitting there and your camera's there going, oh, I want to get that shot. Yeah. Get that shot. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, find it, I find it so hard. Like before, before I got married, you know, so many people kept asking me like, oh, who are you going to hire to shoot your wedding? Yeah. And I'm like, I know this is very difficult. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I mean, you know, then then I thought about it and I kind of thought, well, you know what, actually, um, my background, you know, my, because my background is shooting music. So that's, that's yeah. where I started, yeah. you know, photographers shooting bands. And so I thought I'd feel most comfortable with somebody who comes from that same background, you know. And maybe I thought like, oh, maybe somebody who's, you know, is used to shooting musicians and, you know, bands maybe has a slightly different eye or something. I don't know, yeah. you know, um, but it was, uh, it was great. Um, and because you knew him, you probably felt comfortable with him. Yes. And that was a, that was a big thing. You know, that was a huge thing. Yeah. And you know, a lot of the things I do as well is that I photograph the detail shots before the wedding. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So I don't do them on the day and well, unless they, it, it's, you know, they're busy and they can't do it. Sure. But usually a day or two beforehand, I'll go to their house. And it just kind of gives you a chance to be a little bit more creative. And like there was one there that I had photographed uh, and they were Liverpool supporters. So they had a, a bedroom full of Liverpool stuff. And so, do you know what I mean? Like, and I had the, the shoes and, and the, the ivor board and, you know, the, the liver board. Sorry. Not the <laughs> <laughs> the ivor board. Where did I get that from? And, and uh, it's like, you know their their shoes like as if they're walking and have you never yeah. walk alone at the top and oh, yeah, yeah. like that so it kind of gives me a chance to think about it and when you're there you, usually 
the parents are there and the mum is there and the dad is there and they have the brothers and sisters and sometimes if they have people coming over from the UK, you know, so a lot of people have family from all over the world and they, they're coming for the wedding and they're in the house. So you get to meet them and you're chatting with them and you're chatting yeah. with the mother. So come the wedding day, I'm walking in like I've known them all my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, that's a really, that's actually a really good uh, bit yeah. of advice because that's, a, that's, a, that's totally a mistake that I made on, I think, the, the first, no, the second wedding that I ever shot that wasn't like a friend or something. And I turned up at the house and like on the day and the house was stuffed with Disney characters like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and whatever. And they were like little statues, big statues, pillows, cushions, the whole, sh- I mean, everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, Like Mickey in the car, like, I don't know, lots of, lots of stuff and tons of Star Wars stuff, right? There's everything like figures and like, uh, you know, all sorts of different Star Wars things, lightsabers and whatever. And so I naturally, totally stereotypically assumed that the groom was into Star Wars and the bride was into Disney, right? That's what I assumed. And so yeah. I, I kept placing them and photographing them with these with these themes. <laughs> and it was only at the end of the wedding that I actually learned that it was the other way around. It's like he was into Disney and she was a Star Wars nut. They're like, oh, God. That, that's like me and the husband when we go to the pub, people automatically give him the Guinness and me the Carlsberg. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. Which. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. So I have, a, I have a whole lot of, like, weird wedding photos. <laughs> they like them, but, you know, I don't know. You know, I know. But, like, yeah, but I just, uh, I just, it's, I just think it's more relaxing on the day because, you know, I mean, there's, like, there was another thing that I had said to um, one of the brides that was like, so where's your shoes? Mm. And it took her over half an hour the night before to find her shoes. So can you imagine the following morning? She wouldn't. She says, I wouldn't have looked for them. Yeah. I wouldn't have known where they were. And there was another guy here and he asked me to second shoot with him. And uh, I said I would. So I covered the groom. He covered the bride because it was he knew the bride. Mm. And then he rings me and he says, we're running late because the brides can't find her shoes. So the shoes was in in somebody else's house. So she had to borrow a pair of shoes and the only one that she can get that fit her was a pair of cerise pink shoes with Del Monte things on them. Oh, right. Belonged to her sister that fit her. So she walked down the aisle in these shoes and she was like upset over it. But I was like, it's fine. I said, it's different. Yeah. Says, you rock them shoes. Don't worry about it. I says, well, you know, make it, make it work. You know, don't worry about the shoes. But I pulled, I says to him afterwards, I says, see, there you go. There's one thing about doing the detail shots the day beforehand. Yeah. If that happened the day before, you would have known that those shoes were in another house that was too far away to bring, you know. Yeah. So I just think it's, you know, just and on the day, you just, when, you know, walk in, you want to catch the atmosphere in general. You want to catch people talking and, you know, the usually the father has the pinny on and he's making the breakfast and, you know, they're great memories to have. So if you walk in and the, you're there going, okay, so I need to do the detail shots and you go upstairs and, you're photographing rings and shoes and dresses. You're missing all that. You're missing all what's going on downstairs. And, you know, and I just think it's more relaxing for the bride that ran me to her and said, where's your shoes? Where's your dress? Where's yeah. this? Where's that? It makes you perfect know? sense. I mean, when you yeah. think about it, it makes perfect sense. It's just, it's just something that I wouldn't simple. have. Yeah, yeah, it's simple. Exactly. You shoot pretty much all weddings with at least one other photographer. Yeah. I did start doing it myself at the start. But uh, I just find that um, when you have a second shooter, you get all angles covered. You have, so I would do the bride. I just, I'll just say myself and Peter, for example, because he'd be the guy that I would mostly do it with. Mm. Um, so I would be with the bride. He'd go to the groom or or we could swatch, or, you know, switch around. Or if it's in a hotel, we'll do the two of them together. And, you know, so he would get one side, I'd get the other. But when they walk in, Obviously, I'm up the front. He says down the back. So I'm getting the bride walking up and he's down the back. So when the bride is walking up, so he'd get the back of her, but he gets him turning around and you could see his reaction as soon as he sees her. I mean, how can you do that mm. with just on your own? Because but when he turns around to look at her, my shot is him looking behind and it's her reaction seeing him, mm. you know? So... And, you know, obviously you have, you know, the rings and that instead of like switching around behind the the ceremony or whatever, you know, the priest or, I mean, obviously, you know, when you're in a a small room, just say in a hotel, it's it's tight. 
Do you know what I mean? So if, if you've one person over one side and you're over the other, you don't have to worry about that switching back and forth. And uh, I mean, even for holding off camera flash for afterwards for different shots, Peter can go up and hold the flash. And, uh, you know, just, you know, he would could get, and, and even the, the guests, you know what I mean? We split them up. He takes some tables, I take the other tables. So right. we get everything covered. You know what I mean? And I just think it's more relaxed knowing that you have somebody else there. You yeah. know, as Peter would say, Peter would say, oh, I wouldn't do a wedding without you. I wouldn't do it. Or <laughs> 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 yeah. like, and, and people say to you, do you ever get nervous? And I'm like, no. I actually, I look forward to weddings and yeah. I never get nervous. And, and I think it's knowing that Peter's going to be there or Stephanie's going to be there. Mm. You know, you're not, you know, something happens, you're not on your own. I mean, the last one I photographed on my own was I, they were, it was in uh, Barbara's Town, it was Barbara's Town Castle. And the bride was coming in, ready to walk down the aisle. And I was changing card. Next of all, my card wouldn't work. So it was actually where it went in. Wow. Completely broke. My other camera was in a bag up the top and it was only a crop sensor at the time. Mm. But the one I had on me was full frame, which is the one that wasn't working. But when I was walking kind of up the, the aisle thing on the way out to meet the bride, I had spotted a guy with uh, a Canon 5D Mark II. <laughs> right. And I ran in and I went, <laughs> can I move over your camera, please? Just for And I says, this one's after break on me just for, just for a few minutes, just, you know, when yeah. they're coming in. And he goes, yeah, here you go. <laughs> and just hands me his camera. And... Like, I was like, oh, my God, what happened if she walked in and I didn't get up there and I didn't get the other camera out in time and everything was going up? What would I have done? Yeah. You know, I mean, of all times, a camera and it can happen. A card, a card went on me. I was doing um, photographs for a big company in Ireland. I'm not going to say the company. (laughs) It was a big company and it was important shots. Now, I did have two cameras with me at the time. I was I always have two sometimes three <laughs> and uh, you know when you have that error on the card yes I know it well yeah <laughs> yeah. and I was like oh shit right yeah. oh, sorry I didn't say the F word <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> anyway I went oh no I says um, I, I just I didn't say and I just put the camera down and I says oh look I'm going to use uh, a different lens any chance we can just do that again I'm just switching lenses you know because I would, I just gave them a different, I don't know what I said to them at the time. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So we shot a few of the ones again. And uh, when I got home, I did get software and I that retrieved them all, thank God. Oh, and wow. I did get them all back. But I always think, what if that doesn't yeah. happen? So, I mean, even when I'm in, in the wedding, at least if anything happens, I know Peter's there or Stephanie's there. You know what I mean? It yeah. can be covered and I don't have to panic. And, you know, and I always have two cameras on me now as well. Yeah. Always on, on me all the time. And so does Peter. So, yeah. you know, it's it's covered. So I, I just don't, I have nothing to worry about, put it that way, yeah. apart from it's, the weather. <laughs> because, I mean, w- weddings are a really stressful environment anyway. Yeah. You know, I know, wed- I, I know weddings fairly well because I used to play a lot of weddings yeah. as a musician. And so, you know, for, for the longest time I used to, when, when people would ask me, like, you know, do you shoot weddings? I'm like, well... You know, I've played so many weddings in in my lifetime that I, I I'm I'm wedding out. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. and it's it's really only been so maybe for the last six months that I've been thinking. Well, actually, that being said, I quite like weddings. <laughs> you know, yeah. so as so I've been sort of dabbling with the idea of uh, of learning how to shoot weddings. You know, but it's a uh, it's a steep learning curve because I've you know I've looked at obviously I've looked at uh, you know images like you know by yourself and uh, since of Peter's. Um, you know, shots and, you know, I've, I've been, uh, oh, I spoke to Vanessa Joy a little while ago on the podcast oh, yeah, as well. She's amazing, yeah. And, you know, you look at that, you kind of go, wow, that's like, that's much harder than I thought. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I think as well as that, you need to kind of know even how to pose them, even if it's just for certain shots. Yeah. You have the certain things you have to watch out for. Now, I just find... Now, I'm not slagging off the lads, right? But I just find that I see things differently than some of the fellas do. Uh, do you know yeah. what I mean? So if a girl has a certain way she would look and you could see her double chin or you could see, you know, if your head's up high, sometimes if they feel that they have a double chin, some girls tend to lift their head right up yeah. to stretch it out. But they're yeah, yeah. seeing up their nostrils. Do you know what I mean? So what I do is um, 
before when when they're in the room getting ready. Yeah. So I have the brides, the the mother, and I have all the girls, and I give them a five minute posing lesson. All of them. It's very quick. Great. And and I'm known for it, so everyone is like, oh my god, you know, like that was amazing. Just those tips alone. Yeah. Are are you know? It's just it's how to stand. You know, when they're all together, you know, to have their knees bent the same way and just, you know, to kind of lift the, keep the gap between the arms. So I, it's literally only five minutes and especially sitting down on a table because I say to them, especially the older ladies, the first thing they do when someone goes, you know, there's a group, just say four of them or something sitting down. And so they're sitting down at a table and somebody comes along with a camera. The first thing they do is they all lean back into each other. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like, Ugh. And they always go, oh, I hate photographs myself. I says, yeah, because that's the way you're, you're leaning back. You're getting double chins and you're looking up your nostrils. And, and I say, so this is this is how you sit. Get the bums right back in the chair as far as you can. Lean into it. Feel the pull. You know, yeah. so I have them all sitting on the kitchen table doing this. And yeah. they're, they're delighted with life. And, and because that only takes five minutes, but you find then throughout the day, the bride is taking that in. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I do hand signals rather than, you know, shouting, turn your head right, left. And I have yeah. these little hand signals. Like, yeah. And I explain that to them. So if I go like that, they know to pull chin forward. If I go like yeah. that to tilt left. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have to watch YouTube to see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I, I, I do exactly the same thing with headshots, actually, because I, yeah. I use hand signals and I explain the whole shebang beforehand, you know. Yeah, do you know, it saves a heap of yeah. time. Yeah. It saves a heap of time. Oh, and I always go through the venue with them as well, wherever they get married. I would meet them and go through the venue with them as well beforehand mm -hmm. because I just find that that saves a hell of a lot of time too because if you're in a venue that you've never been before it's okay if you have been because you have good ideas Yeah, but if it's somewhere you've never been walk the venue beforehand and go sit and, and with the couple and say look we can get one here and if you stand like this and you know and then they know after doing it with them a couple of days beforehand or a week beforehand or whatever it was we were there they'll just naturally fall into that you know, pose or yeah. and then you know you have them laughing and joking and stuff like that, so you can get they love the natural shots and yeah, you know. But yeah, do you do the the turtleneck sometimes? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stick the chin in. Yeah, and I so, always say it looks it might look shite from the side, but it looks great from the front. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like sometimes you know with with headshots because I I prefer to to shoot people standing rather than doing seated poses. Yeah. Uh, it's just because I can get them more relaxed and they and especially yeah. especially for guys um yeah. they get a, so for a slightly cooler kind of look when they're actually standing because i i, I post them from the feet upwards basically yeah. yeah so you know i tell them how to stand because then it has, a, has an impact on what their upper body does and you know and all the rest of it and uh at, by the time i've finished with them they are in such an unnatural pose that from their perspective it must look it must feel totally weird you know because they've got yeah, the yeah, legs yeah. sticking out and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then when they see the shots, you know, they kind of they go, "Oh, now I understand." And the interesting thing about this is is that I I do these um, sort of review segments uh, as part of a session. So basically, you know, I get a client in, I explain to them how how to, you know how to pose, um, then we shoot a little bit, then I get them back in front of the screen and we review the first forty shots or something, forty yeah. fifty shots, and they didn't get a really good impression of what these these weird head angles and whatever, yeah. what well, they actually look like on the screen. And then when they go back um, in front of the camera, they have a much better, better understanding and it, it, it sort of, uh, they remember how to do certain things. And then they also get, get sort of an idea as to what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. And before you know it, they sort of post themselves. You That's know, right, yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's so that... great. Uh, there was one to, uh, uh, it was a wedding I was doing and, and it was a detail shot. Mm. And, it was just a particular house that there was just, you know, the way there's stuff everywhere. It was a small house and there's makeup and people and, yeah. and it was really tight. And I wanted to get the rings and um, I was like, oh, my God. Well, so I, I says to the mother, I said, have you had any tin foil, you know, and uh, well, aluminum foil for the gangs right. that are listening in there. So anyway, um, I pulled off a bit of uh, tin foil and I got it, you know, crunched it all up yeah. and, you know, and put it at the window. And I got my phone and I put the rings on my phone, just a black screen, you know, there was mm -hmm. nothing on the thing. So you can get the reflection of the rings yeah, yeah. on the phone. And I put the tin foil behind and the granny was there behind. She can hear, and you know the way the grannies are all half deaf, so they always talk loud thinking nobody can yeah. hear them. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's like, do you know? She goes, I don't think that girl knows what she's doing. Doesn't that look a bit stupid now? Like, uh, I don't think that's going to. And then when I showed her the image, yeah. that you could see the reflection that you could. And, and the, the tin foil was like bokeh in the background. Yeah, yeah. And she went, oh, my God. And it is. <laughs> You all have to look at this. You all have to look at this. So it's not necessary, you know. But it was so funny because she had, yeah. she thought that I hadn't a clue what I was doing, mm. <laughs> you know. But they're but, just the little tips. Yeah, that's that's all the little tricks you learn, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's I because I saw that when I, when I looked at the images, um, it you know the the way you especially with the detail shots, you know the way you yeah. photograph the rings and the shoes and the yeah. dresses and stuff like that. You know, I looked at them thinking like, wow, this. There's a lot of thought goes into all of that, you know, and, uh, you know, and now that I know that you're doing that on a separate day, mm. it makes perfect sense why. Yeah. It's just so much more relaxed and, yeah. you know, you can take your time and there's no rushing. And, you yeah. know, I usually say, oh, just give me an hour. I'm usually there a couple of hours because I end up sitting down with the family having a cup of tea before I yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> if I you get to know them all a bit more. Yeah. If you think back to the first wedding you ever shot, yeah. And you compare that to the way you shoot weddings now. Oh God, yeah. There's... Like, well, if you could go back and speak to you, like your former self, like your past self, when you when you when you shot your first wedding, you could give that that past version of yourself some advice. What would you say? I would say learn to use off camera flash. Because <laughs> 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 if it rains, you can get creative. Right. Um, what would I say? I would say always have a second shooter. You know, right. because I. The first couple, like, I mean, I was nervous the first, you know, for the first few. And and I think I obviously edit, you know, skin edit because, like, there was a, a girl, a wedding I went to, and uh, she was given a photographer as a, a present. But they did no skin editing, no nothing. And in some of the shots, she just wasn't happy with them. And you could see... Like her, mm. the way her bra came, came over the thing, and they said they didn't know how to edit them. And this was kind of further on when I started doing the skin editing, and you know, to be able to remove stuff like that. And I was thinking at the start, going, "Oh my god! Like, what if the first ones I did? What if they had said to me, can you remove, you know, do all the skin editing? I mean, I could remove spots and stuff like that when I, you know, because I, I, I don't, I wouldn't have done a wedding unless I was." confident enough yeah. to do it. Do you know that type of way? Sure. And, uh, but I was kind of like, I really need to learn to edit more and learn to do this stuff mm -hmm. because they do make the shots better. I just, I just find. And if, yeah. if a bride wakes up in the morning and like this particular girl got a nervous rash mm. and she was covered in a rash and they're all over her photographs where, you know, I just find if you can't, if you, if you are starting off even try to learn to do that because what if that happened? Yeah. You know what I mean? The bride's not going to want skin rash. And and it's not like you have to go and skin edit every single image. Like I would say to them, you know, if there's something you want and, and you need to skin edit or if you have a big spot or a scratch or mm -hmm. something happened, you know, the day before and that you end up with a big something on your face, you know, I say, don't worry about it because whatever goes in the album, I will remove and if it's something you want to post somewhere or something you want to get printed, just let me know and I'll do a touch up on it. Yeah. Um, but I think it's to know that kind of stuff starting off. You know what so, I mean? You know, that's actually a good point because I've wondered this many times. Um, you know, when you when you shoot a wedding and you come back with, I don't know, a couple of thousand shots or something. I mean, clearly you're not going to like full on edit 2000 shots or whatever. Yeah. Um, do you only do like a full edit on the ones, as you said, that go into an album or uh, the ones that get printed? Or do you do you have sort of a, a fast editing technique that you apply to everything? Like how does that actually work? That's uh... I actually edit every single shot. Oh, wow. I don't skin edit every single shot. Right. But now you have the texture slider, you know, that... In, oh, like, yes. You can just, just bring it down. So, in we, you know, yeah. somewhere we try, I think it was just... Uh, I've done too much maybe about 10-ish or thereabouts mm -hmm. 15 it depends on the person it depends what I'm looking at but uh, I, yeah I just I sit there and I, I I don't do the the sync you know what I mean get a preset and sync it all the way through I yeah. don't do that unless mm. you know if I did just say I had 10 shots and I did do that 
I would mm. still go through those 10 shots to say, right, I might dial that back yeah. down a bit or I might, because the light could be different. But yeah, I do go in and actually physically edit every single shot. Mm. But uh, if there's like that skin edits and like there was one I did there, I just did an album for and it was uh, ones in town, mm-hmm. you know, in Dublin City. And you could see in the background there was a cone, you know, the street cones. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're like, see that street cone? I said, yep, I removed that for you. So that went into the album, but I removed the street cone. Yeah. Uh, I removed all the dirt off the street, you know, like yeah. there'd be <laughs> packets of crisps on the street oh, or, a God, can, yeah. or, you know, all the rubbish lying around or whatever. Yeah. I do remove them, especially yeah. for the album. But I always say to them, look, if there's anything you want, you know, because a lot of them, they're going to go on a hard drive or they're going to go somewhere. They're never going to print. Yeah. Or they're never, you know, they're going to stay there. Yeah. But I said, if there's something that you want to print off and there is something, you know, distracting, just say it to me. It's going to take me two seconds to remove it. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I tell you what, I did a, I did a shoot um, not too long ago where um, I, ha- I had to shoot the outside of a building. Um, it was a commercial building, a commercial client and um, the only day that I could shoot that, that they had available, was a Thursday. Yeah. Which would have been fine, only, of course, nobody remembered that Thursday was rubbish day. And this oh, just a second said about it. And so there were rubbish bags, you know, trash bags, basically, all littered all over the place. Like, you know, in front of the building, on the street, like, you know, against the street light. It was just terrible. You know, so the only thing I could do is basically shoot the whole thing and then go in and spend about a day in Photoshop just removing all of that and then replacing like fence panels. Uh, it, was, it was just like, it was a major thing. But, you know, it's the only way to do it because. Yeah. Because that was the only day they would allow me to shoot it. So, you know. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> a pain in the neck. But yeah. But, uh, yeah. I know, but newborns are harder, though. I see them edit everything and skin edit. Every yeah. single one. Every single one. Yeah. yeah, newborns, you know, newborns are really tricky. I, I looked at your newborn images and I have to say, um, you know, I got a phone call about a week ago of somebody, somebody local asking whether I do newborn photography and I passed it on to another photographer. <laughs> <laughs> because babies scare me. <laughs> so oh, I, I, I am I, like the baby whisperer now. Honest right. to God. A baby could be screaming and the parents are like, there was one yeah. family to, uh, turn around and says, oh, I can't, don't know if I should go today because the baby just cries so much and he's got colic and he's this and he's that. I'm like, bring him along. Don't worry about it. I'll settle him down. Yeah. And right enough, I probably got one of the best sessions that I'd had at that time, you know, with, with babies. He was just so good. There is a way of settling them down and there is a way of home. I mean, I, there is a knack to it and you have to know yeah. how to, to pose them properly and, and to settle them down and to make sure they're comfortable and um you know and I that's what I was saying, even with the, the background, you try to get the creases out as much as you can, but you're never gonna it's very hard to get them all in. Yeah, yeah. And course. then when you're moving the baby, you're always gonna get creases and that. So, you know, you you have to kind of remove that the creases and the babies always have spots and dry skin and yeah. all sorts, you know what I mean? And so pre- yeah, presumably, it takes forever. Presumably you have to be rather quick. I mean they don't, you know, babies of that age, because newborns were talking, what, under three weeks, under six oh, yeah, weeks? Yeah, up to three weeks is the best. Yeah. Yeah, I find the sweet spot is day 10. Oh, wow. Because, okay. Yeah, the clamp is off. I don't know what it is about day 10. Day 10. Um, when I have a great session, I would say, like, is this baby 10 days old? And they'd go, yeah. I said, I don't know why. It's always, <laughs> yeah, it always seems to be the sweet spot, day 10. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just... Um, yeah, but then you can get some that, you know, uh, could be a little bit older that can be fine. But, you know, when they go past that three, four weeks, they get stronger. So when you put them into a certain position and they're not asleep, they, they tend to straight, you know, stretch their arms and stretch the legs and then yeah. they take themselves out of that position. Whereas coming up to the three weeks, you can mold them into that pos- into position you want and okay. they can stay there and then you can just take you know, the hand from under the side and you can just, you know, put them on their belly and you just, yeah. you know, kind of move their legs and, and they're not disturbed and they're still asleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but when they're older, if you go to move them, sometimes they just wake up and then the hands and legs stretch out. Yeah. They're like, oh, we have to settle them back down again. And, right. you know, so, I mean, they are harder. But then again, I love, I love doing babies. I love doing, I just think I love every day. I mean, I've just finished the school photographs, five-year-olds. 
Okay. You know, I've just done 60 kids, over 60 kids, 66 kids this week. Edit them all. I got every single one of them smiling. Oh, <laughs> I, I need you come over. I need you come over here and, and do this the uh, the photographs at my daughter's school because. Oh, um, I I think it's just I I just act stupid, like you know. What I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like I always I always manage to, you know, I always see I always seem to manage to get them to smile, you know. So uh, I mean I I have stuff with me. I've always been here. This time I had I usually have these silly sausage things. But they were packed away, so I had to have these big orange glasses, and yeah. you know, you just mess around and say, "Jesus, I can't can't see that smile now." I'm gonna grab my glasses there and say, "Can I see a bit better now?" And then you know, they start laughing, yeah, yeah. and you know, I says, I says, "I think I look quite cool." Do you not think so? And then they just, you know, you work around. You can kind of, um, you know, and then there was like, you know, when you have siblings and there's three of them together, yeah. and you want to get them tight and hugging, yeah. you know, <laughs> and you always get the kids. I'm not putting my arm around my brother. That's my sister. I'm not. No, I don't like my brother and sister. <laughs> and I'm like, the, 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 I had one, I had three kids that were like that. Some of them were great. Loved their brothers and sisters, would sit there and hug them. And, mm. you know, I would have like a normal one kind of together. And then I says, right, go closer. And then I go, hug. <laughs> and then they go, ah. and then that's when they smile and they laugh. And, yes. You know, and the parents always get that one. Always yeah. get the one where they're they're squeezing each other. And these three kids were like, I'm not hugging him. I'm not hugging him. So I pulled up a chair and I'm like, right, I've got all day here. So I have, what time are you? I says to my friend that's helping us, what time are you here till? Oh, so we got about three hours, right? Because these pair aren't going anywhere to the, to the, the, <laughs> to the, I said, I don't even have any sweets to bribe you with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I says, if you could either give that hug on the count of three, I says, or I'm going to stay here with you, Stray. You're going to stay standing beside each other. With your arms around each other for the next three hours, you know, and they're like, "Okay, we'll just get it over with, right?" I says because I tell you what, you might hate us, right? But your mother's yeah. gonna love it, and when you turn our age, you're gonna love it, right? Yeah. So I says, "Now we're gonna do this," and I'm like, "On the count of three, one, two, three, and they just did, kind of close and all smile. It was like, "Boom," <laughs> <laughs> you know. But like, I've had parents come to me going, "Oh my god!" In all my years, I have never had a photograph of my three kids together smiling and close. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think it's when it's not your own. If it's your own, they're like, get stuff, I'm not doing uh, You know what I mean? But when it's yeah, other people's different. kids, you, you're a bit more, you yeah. know, kind of encouraging, you know. <laughs> Let me just press the button again. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> this is going to be a long one, is it? Oh, it's yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Um, some of the some of the episodes are really long, but it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, yeah, it's right. Let's just do the clap again. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Perfect. Awesome. Super. Cool. So it really helps if you're a, a you know a people person. I think um, yeah. when you're when you're working with subjects. This I remember like a long time ago, probably about ten years ago or something like that. I shot um, I shot a group of of kids with another photographer. And he was like, well, that was his thing. He was, you know, shooting, um, you know, children, families, family photography. That was that was his thing. And he was really good in like motivating, especially younger kids. And he did the dinosaur thing, you know, where he goes like, right, I'm going to count down from three. And he give me a dinosaur. He goes three, two, one, rah. And <laughs> yeah, you know, and then you get these really cool expressions. And so, before the pandemic, I remember I did a shoot, a corporate shoot in Budapest. That's the last shot. The last shoot I did before everything shut down. Yeah. Um, and I was shoot. I was. I was doing a conference. Um, and it was like a senior management conference, I think, or something like that. And uh, you know, for like a major international corporate. And so they wanted, um, they wanted to do a group photo of like about four hundred people, on like a big, swerving staircase. Yeah. And so. I said, okay, well, we can do that, you know. And these are all like corporate managers, right? And so they're all like, we got them all under the stairs and, you know, I had some assistants doing the lights and stuff. And I'm on a, on a ladder, you know, trying to get them all, get them all in the shot. And because of the way your space was limited, so I had to go super wide. So the whole thing looked kind of comical anyway. So I kind of thought, how can I get them to give me some expressions? <laughs> I just went, 
Go, listen up. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I got to do the diet for so. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, they loved it. So there were 400 like, senior managers there going, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, and and you know, that shot made it not only onto their website, onto the international website, but also it made it into the final presentation. Because what happens in these, in these um, uh, conferences usually is on the last day, there's like a, a presentation. I deliver images specifically for that, for that presentation. Um, it's quite a stressy thing because you've got to shoot and edit and do headshots and do all sorts of different things, you know, all like all within like three days. Um, and that's the shot they loved. That's the shot yeah. they loved the most because it was the most animated and it was, you know, just slightly off. Think about it. it is better than people just standing there like this, you know. Well, exactly. That's exactly what I thought. Some, some smiling, some not smiling. Yeah. Other to get something know. like that, you actually stop and look at it and look yeah. at everyone's expression. Exactly. You can see why. Exactly. And you can't like, you know, you can't really pose 400 people, you know, yeah. because yeah. they're all, they're all there. You know, a lot of them don't really want to be there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a thing that they have to do. And their marketing exact has basically said, well, that's what we're going to do at, you know, at 2.32, between 2.32 and 2.38. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you got them all together. I mean, I was at somewhere yeah. and I was working for a newspaper at the time, but I also worked for the council. Right. And they, I was at an event and the council needed uh, a photograph. And one of the ministers had come up to me and said, Kathy, you wouldn't do us a favour. This guy, although, although like, I mean, I know you're with the paper today and you're not with the council, mm. but we need to get this shot. And he's just not getting the people together. You know what I mean? He was a quiet guy. He just, you know. Oh, yeah. And she goes, I know you'll do it. So I says, all right. I went in there right now, folks. Come on out. And I got I got them all up there, got them all up in the stage, uh, got them all, you know, in their lines and the whole lot, nice big smiles and boom, less than five minutes, everybody yeah. up and got the shot. And I, I got it for the paper as well anyway when it was there. But, uh, you know, I, yeah, you do have to be, if you're quiet, anyway, quiet or reserved, you're not going to, and you have to, when you, like I've had people say, uh, like Sarah say, wow, you're bossy, you know, like at a wedding. <laughs> And I go, I know, I know, I know. And I, I said, I honest way, I always get my own way. And they go, yeah, but you're right. You have to be. You have to. Oh, yeah. But I'm not bossy in a cranky way. I'm bossy mm. in a fun way. Yeah, yeah. Just, but because you have to be, you have to be to get the yeah. shots you want. Do you know what I mean? And you say you're a dinosaur. I have a duck. That I oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a duck sound. And especially with the kids that are five years of age, yeah. you know, the, and the duck sound always works. Because I'm like, like yeah. I even say there, it says that that duck will only quack if you smile. Do you know, right. then again, you get others that have the, you know, the, the big cheesy grin. They're like, ah. yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to think of other ways to get that less cheesy grin, you know, yeah, yeah. the normal. But um, yeah, you, you kind of, I think if you're quiet, it's just, uh, it, it depends on what, you know, just do maybe still life or something like that. <laughs> yeah product photography <laughs> yeah something like that you know don't you have to you have to be a people person to deal with people yeah absolutely uh, you know that's for sure yeah definitely. just just uh, just like you have to be a real dog person to photograph dogs <laughs> I oh think that's my god like... did you see Kaylee Greer's uh oh well at the photography show she was on the live stage yes that girl's incredible yeah she's absolutely. incredible absolutely I mean her book sold out so she came in like as soon as she walked out, there was the queue all yeah. the way because Sam, her partner, was like, "Oh!" and he got the fo like the phone and he was going, yeah. getting them all, going around the the corner, getting them all the kind of yeah. um, queuing. And I says to Sam, "Do you know what you have there? You just got everybody's arse, right? <laughs> <laughs> you went the wrong way around." <laughs> I, mean, so I said, "You want to get the happy smiley faces?" So I I did it on my phone. And I started with Kaylee and, and went all along the queue and there was going waving, huh? And all the way down to the end. And this is sad. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was just so funny the way it was done. Like it was like, yeah, I know. God, it's just, you know, the way I just saw the queue and I was just like, yeah. oh, I just take out my phone and get a little bit of this. <laughs> this you know, my, my daughter is really into, um, it, well, she loves dogs. Yeah. And um, uh, and she she likes photography. So she she wants to be a photographer. Oh, lovely! Right. And so, uh, and clearly, you know, she has, uh, she's got Kaylee's book, and so, you know, obviously, when we were at the photography, a uh, photography show, I went, uh, you know, we had, we had some coffee at some point, and I kind of thought, actually, you know, my daughter must, I think she's back from school. Why don't I just FaceTime 
her now. And then oh, I turned wow. the phone around <laughs> and oh, I came and, yeah, yeah, I talked to her. And so, you know, and Kara picked up and said, I went like, oh, I've got somebody who wants to talk to you. <laughs> I turned the phone around and there's Katie going, hi, Kara. And Kara's face was just like stone. She just went, uh. <laughs> Speechless. I asked what I was going to say. Did she freeze? Oh, she... completely. Yeah, yeah. She was like, she was completely like, didn't know oh, what was going on. It's for just it, fantastic. It? Like when I, when I was at the Rocky Nook stand, um, I was actually buying Kaylee's Grace, so she, uh, sorry, Kaylee's book. Right. And she was signing it for me. And this kid walked past and he says to the dad, that's her, that's her, right? Oh, yeah. So he came over and the dad says, oh, my son is after buying your book and he's he's bad into dogs. And Kaylee's like, oh, my God, show me, show me your photographs. And she stood there and she signed his book and, you know, she... She says, oh, let me, it says they're beautiful shots and spoke to them. And like she made that kid's day, you know, and that child is going to go up and go, Kaylee Greer loved my photographs. Now, yeah. so I'm going to continue this. <laughs> yeah. And that could be that little boost that he needs to, to continue. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And the same with Tara, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's a big thing for her. That, you know, I, I, I took her book to Birmingham with me because I knew um, that Kaylee was going to be there. So, um, she, you know, she wrote the really nice little thing into, uh, into, into the front of the book, and so, you know, I, I knew that was going to make her happy. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so yeah, that's that's a that's a good moment for her. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she, you know, she's managed to get. I mean, Kara's managed to get some really cool shots. Um, because she is very good with dogs. Yeah. You know, she's grown up with dogs. Um, our dog Solo is that's you know that's her pride and joy. They are. Kara's with me every weekend and into school holidays and they are, when she's here they are inseparable yeah. like they just stick together so she knows she's really in tune with dog's behavior and you know the way they react and yeah well you will she, show me a couple of those now, yeah 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 she, she sets some really funny shots yeah. um yeah but yeah so um okay <laughs> newborn photography um is this the is this the one area I mean like I said earlier it's the one thing that's that's always really scared me because, and it shouldn't really because I've had I've had kids I should know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I've I've always found it. I found it very difficult to kind of wrap my head around um, how you, you know, how you get newborn babies to do what you want them to do. Mm. But when I listen to you, do you explain how you know? Uh, when when they're under ten days, you can mold them. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you can. You can. I come in as long as they're not screaming the place down. But then at the same time, you calm them down. Like it, there is like when I have them, I cross the legs and put the legs into my tummy, and I have their backs on my hand. Oh, and then I bounce them, and I'm bouncing right. them back, so I get a great workout. Right, <laughs> but <laughs> they could be screaming and whatever that is. And it was years ago I seen. Um, it was I can't remember what I was watching, but it was a pediatrician's for babies, isn't it? The doctors, are they? Oh, uh, it a, isn't it? A, a children's doctor. Yeah, I don't want to get the yeah. name wrong. A pediatrician. I said, no, that's for feet or something like that. I yeah. know, <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, so he was saying, this is if you have a baby, this is how you calm a baby down, and it works all the time. So I always remember that from years ago, hmm. and it does work. Like it actually does work, and then. You just kind of take the time. Now, if they're breastfeeding, it takes longer because sometimes they're not full enough. And I always find if they have a full belly, mm. you know, they they kind of settle a lot better yeah. when they're breastfed. You have to kind of keep topping up. But I don't book more than one baby a day. Oh, yeah. It's just one baby because I would prefer to get the shots and do it over three, four hours. Mm -hmm. Then say, right, you're, you're two hours, three hours are up or whatever it is. That's yeah. it. I'm done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I just like it is. I would say, look, the babies are the boss. Mm. You know, we're not the boss. It's the babies are the boss. And you know, if the baby needs fed, the baby needs fed. If the baby poos, the baby needs changed. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, I've had you know the way the baby be naked across the, you know just say a mother's arm, and uh, so the baby be lying there and the the hand would be on the face and the bum was here and the baby would and next of all just like and it's full all the way up uh, and I'm like. Yeah. Don't leave your arm. Don't leave your arm. And the, like, the poo would be all up her arm. Uh, I'm like, just stay there. Just stay there. Don't worry about it. Because I, I get rid of it post. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. The, you won't even see the poo afterwards. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, obviously tell the parents as well to bring a change of clothes because sometimes if you do that, and I don't know why, but they always seem to poo on the dad. You know, <laughs> 90% of the time. Is yeah, yeah. Dad. <laughs> yeah, I remember it well for some reason. <laughs> it's that I'm puking for some reason. I always got puked on. Yeah. yeah, but it's just, I think you just, it's just, I think it's just a, a case of getting used to. You yeah. know what I mean? The first ones are really hard because you're nervous on how you're, you know, holding them. And, you know, if they start crying, I think at the first ones, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to calm this baby down? Or, mm. you know, and then you find the mothers are getting agitated because they're there going, oh God, I'm really sorry, you know, because they're crying so much. And yeah. I'm like, eh. Don't worry about it. Do you, want to, do you want a cup of tea? We'll just wait till he's, you know, go yeah. give a little feed or, you know, and just make them feel relaxed because if they're relaxed, then it'll run a lot smoother as well, you know? Yeah. And by only booking one baby a day, you take the stress out of your oh, yeah. head as well. Because... Oh, should the place, the studio just be upside down by the time I'm finished? Yeah. There's stuff everywhere. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. You know, I've, I actually, um, I did exactly the same thing with headshot sessions um, about a year and a half ago or something. Um, because, it, like I said earlier, I used I used to have sort of a, a package system where it was like you know, half an hour. The package one would be half an hour, and then it'd be like an hour and a half or something. But what I found is I always found I'd, I'd be working against the clock. I'd be shooting against the clock, and I'd be coming up towards the end of the session, and I I'd, I'd know we haven't really got what we need to get, you know. Or I get to the end of the session, I'm thinking like, oh, it's, it's only been for the last ten minutes that the client has been really calm and relaxed they've really got into yeah because sometimes it takes them yeah it takes them because they're not used to being in front of the camera and it was really when I changed my whole pricing structure and the way that I charge and when I took away the the limitation of time mm-hmm. that I ended up feeling a lot more relaxed yeah because I know I'm not you know I'm not shooting against the clock um, the client is a lot more relaxed because really I can I can totally work to their clock. Sometimes they come in and they have an hour and that's fine. But sometimes they come in and they've taken the afternoon off. Also fine. You know, if we if we spend four hours together shooting headshots, well, they're going to come back with some awesome headshots. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's that's the difference. And we're not like, it's not like taking passport photos. You know, we walk in, you hit the shutter button and then I walk out <laughs> with yeah. the photo. Yeah, you're grand. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <You> know? <laughs> and it's like, it makes for, it makes for a better result, a better outcome. It yeah. makes for, um, you know, a lot more relaxing and less, much less stressful session. And it actually also means that the client leaves happy. Yeah. Because they've had a really good experience. This is what I get all the time. It's like, you know, it's they really love the experience. And of course, nine times out of 10, those three people, especially with corporate headshots, they may not necessarily ever have had their headshots taken before. They don't really know what the, what to expect. Yeah. You know, or they would have a photographer that rocks up at the company, it you know, takes three shots, and that'd, that'd be the end of it. You know, so uh, I I found that by taking away that limitation, and just you know, just like you, I only I will only ever book one headshot client a day. Yeah, I, it is so That's much it. more relaxing. I mean, fathers have turned around and said to me, "I was actually dreading today," but mm-hmm. he says you actually made it enjoyable. Yeah, that I loved every single minute of it. Yeah, and you know, it does just make a big difference. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool. So for somebody wanting to get into um, newborn photography, what what kind of tip would you would you give them? Uh well, to not rush it, number one, because it does take a while. As I said, babies are the boss. So make sure the baby has a full belly. Um wait till th- it's best to feed them when the when the parents arrive, feed a baby den. Don't mm. feed the baby beforehand because by the time you come off and and strip it and put it into the outfit or put the wraps around it. The baby kind of wakes up and it could be awake for ages. So feed the baby then. So just have patience, number one. Uh, learn, like look at loads of, uh, even take some sort of course of some sort, even just to show you how to pose the baby, mm-hmm. how to make sure the baby's relaxed. Because especially if the baby has, still has a clamp on, you have to make sure that clamp isn't tugging or pulling. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to make sure the neck isn't stretched up too far that the that the baby is comfortable. Yeah. And um, you know, do it on kind of friends and family for us to kind of do a lot of practice and don't go straight in and start charging because you can go back and they're gonna go, Oh, you know, yeah, learn you know, learn to skin edit and yeah, kill of the backgrounds sure. mm-hmm. because that would be probably the more advanced. But the ones that like there was somebody had turned around and said to me just a while ago, 
that they want to do newborn. Somebody had asked her to do them and she was trying to do what kind of the shots that I would have, the pose ones on the blankets and things like that. I said, do more kind of uh, natural ones in the house. Maybe them holding them at the window. More kind of, uh, what's the word? I'm looking for? <laughs> not, not the Michael Jackson one. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, that one. <laughs> <laughs> more kind of, uh, oh God, I couldn't even think of that. I've got brain freeze just now. But just natural shots, basically. Used window light, just kind of make them more natural rather than uh, as you're trying to pose them on something and clean a background. Do you know what I mean? Do kind of in the house where the kids are looking over their shoulder down, where the parents are. You know, those type of lifestyle, that's the word, kind yeah. of more lifestyle images. Do that first. You know what I mean? Trying to get the feel of it first and then maybe try and do one or two of them lying down and mm. and then gradually go from there. Because if you go straight in head on, I'm just going to take newborns and put a blanket there. I mean, it's even posing them, putting the, the blankets on the pillows under their head and, and mm. propping them right. Like some people have them flat and they're, you know, whatever way they, they put the pillows under isn't right. And yeah. they're, you have to kind of, when you're looking down, kind of look down more down their nose than rather than up their nose. And, you know, it's, you you get used to it as you go along, but it's, it's not an easy one to do. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's more probably the hardest, I think, to photograph person, you know, than people like weddings and, you know, mm -hmm. older kids and stuff like that. It is definitely harder. But once you get the knack of it, once you get the whole, you know, the hang of the cushion, it's fine. It, it feels like weddings and newborn photography goes hand in hand really rather well because you'd sort of, you could kind of think, well, you know, people get married and then like and a year or two later, they're babies. <laughs> and they have returning, re recurring <laughs> customers. Yeah. And yeah. I've got them going back up honeymoon. Guess what? I'm pregnant. <laughs> awesome. Can I book you in? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's a perfect business model, really, if you think about it. Yeah, and I've I come across people and they, they'd say to me, the two things I will never do are weddings and newborns. The mm. the ones that people hate, you know, they find they're just too, where they're the ones I love, you know. I, yeah. just, I suppose I love anything to do with people and I do love landscape as well. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I just I suppose I just love photography in general, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I d product now I don't need, I've never really. I did, a, I did a little bit of product um, during the pandemic. Because, yeah. um, because obviously, you know, the conference sector went, well, it was non-existent. Yeah. You know, so, um, and uh, my headshots, there was there was no headshot photography around for, especially during the lockdowns, you know, over here as well, because you just couldn't be in a room with another person, you yeah. know, for a long time. So I did a little bit of product photography, um, which, you know, I at the time I didn't mind. I mean, it's not really what I do. You know, yeah. it's it's just a uh, you know products are shooting inanimate things. It's difficult because you crack a joke and there's there's no response. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you end up talking to yourself all day, which is something yeah, yeah. I do quite a lot anyway. Sometimes, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and my, my wife's a teacher, so she was actually for the most part of the pandemic, which she's she was doing a little bit of stuff from home, but for the most part, she was actually in school. So it's yeah. literally just me at home going, oh, got, I had to shoot these um these soap bars that like shampoo bars they're yeah. round they're round and white they like ugh, oh, with dear. like <laughs> very little texture in them and it's like man how am i gonna make those look good <laughs> you know <laughs> and then the brief was like oh we want them on a white background really like a white soap bar with no texture on a white background i mean yeah I get yeah. you. I was asked to photograph leaflets on a white background. Right. And they were white leaflets oh, with just a few bit. And here I am. Oh, like, I tried to, they went, no, we want bright white. I said, but so is the paper bright white. And yeah. It's just all, it's like when I do uh, communions. So the girls are in the communion dresses. Right. I won't do communion dresses on a white background. Uh, I do yeah. them on a, a, it's like a light gray yeah. background. Because I just find that that color suits everybody, for starters. Sure. And when, you know, when the girls have the dresses on, it, they're not fading into the background. Do you know what I mean? It makes yeah. the dress stand out a little bit more and you, you see all the detail in the dress. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It's just, that's the way, I just, I that's what I think anyway. 
Yeah, white on white is never a good choice. I mean, that's, that just doesn't. You know, doesn't people different. out there going, "Oh, I do white on white." Yeah, I mean, you know, I was trying out a lot of things. I had a lot of time. You know, I had a lot of time, <laughs> and so I was trying out lots of different things. Um, you know, with hard lights and you know, creating like shadows and you know, um, and I, you know, every time I send stuff off to the company, I was like, "This is what you wanted," but let me just show you this other thing that I've also done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then um, I was uh, they had like three or four different, what do we call it, flavors, you know, of these uh, of these shampoo bars, like uh, coconut and some weird flour and some other stuff. Yeah. And so I was like, I was at some point I was making these these images that had all of these ingredients, but actually visually represented in the image. And so I remember driving around from garden center to garden center to find these very particular yellow flour. <laughs> that I needed for this funny so far. And, you know, I kind of came out of it thinking, you know, but when, when the whole pandemic came to an end, more or less, and we could actually shoot people again, I was like, man, I'm so glad. Oh, thank <laughs> thank God for that, yeah. <laughs> I know, but, you know, you do what you have to do. I mean, I'm, I, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing as far as the wedding industry was concerned, that took a pretty deep nose dive at that time yeah. as well, I guess. Do you know what? It did. It did uh, for the first year, especially. Mm-hmm. But the second year, they kind of lightened up a bit, so they had smaller weddings. Yes, I remember. And you know, funny enough, they were brilliant, and the people that went ahead and done them mm-hmm. were actually glad they did. Like there was one girl in particular, like so she had she was supposed to uh, get married in the Maldives, right? And then it was somewhere else, and it was some big venue with loads of people and. You know, Auto started off at a big venue with loads of people. Then it was the Maldives, and then it was so. In the end, she had there was myself, herself, the husband, the groomsman, their kids. So there was seven of us all together, and we got two cars. And she wanted because she wanted pictures on the beach. She actually got married in a registry office in Bray, which was right at the Bray, the beach front. Mm-hmm. We went to got beach shots. He wanted like uh, shots taken in town. We left there, went and got the shots taken in town. Then we went into town to Stevens Green. We were then we went back to their house and we got them with the dog. And then they went off and had a meal with you know because they could have so many friends. They were only allowed to stay for forty five minutes oh, in yeah. a, a place that the we used the same. So they had that, and then they booked another table further up in the in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. You know, so they they moved. Look, and then they had another group of friends come in, and so it worked out well for them, and they really enjoyed it. And they said they were glad they did that in the end. And they got way more photographs doing it that way than they would have got probably on the day because they got everything they wanted. She wanted the beach ones. Yeah. He wanted, you know, the more uh, kind of industrial type shots. And, you know, then they, they've got them in, in to, like on the main street and Grafton Street. And, you know, so they and they obviously at home with their dog and that. So they got everything that they wanted, mm-hmm. you know. So they were really happy with that. And the same with the one where it booked it down that time. Remember in the dome I was telling you earlier on? 24 people but she said that she got everybody in that shot that she everybody that she wanted that was close to her and she got all the group shots that she wanted and they're all on our wall so she was happy as well so you know everyone just seemed to be happy that what they went for at that time but that was the second round. but then once it kicked off and it opened up then oh my god between <laughs> between the weddings the school photographs the communions the confirmations the the junior infants the yeah, everything, family shots, everything. There was all piling up and piling up. Right. Uh, I think I was stuck at the computer for nearly 24 hours a day for <laughs> for weeks on end, you know, editing, editing to try and yeah. make sure that I was caught up on everything. But, you know, we got through it. It was grand. So what have you got planned for the future? Uh, well, obviously when I move, I'm, like, it, to me it doesn't make any difference where I move to because doing the weddings... Uh, you know, the newborns will probably be a bit different because, but then again, every, like people come to me from all over Ireland. Ireland's not a big place, so it really doesn't make any difference. But I do want to do, and I, I, this will probably never happen, but when I move, I, I've been, because I'm, I'm moving to a house that's on the Shannon, just beside the, you know, and I'm going to get a boat. Mm-hmm. I want to go up and down the Shannon and I want to kind of vlog everything and take photographs and visit different areas and right. you know I says wouldn't it be nice now to do a little YouTube something on YouTube to to show Ireland and to do and then but take the photographs but I also want to meet people hmm. uh, and go in and speak to people 
for like so there's this guy called uh Creedon's John Creed, I think John Creedon, I think it was in, right? It's Creedence Shannon. I was watching it the other day. And it's it's over three series. So I'm on series two and it was saying, Oh, next this week now we're meeting this guy and he's gonna teach us how to make pot chain and put it, you know, on the thing. And this guy pops up and I'm like, Oh my god, I know him. <laughs> so I I was sent out, we were on a, a thing for Fulcher Ireland. So it's kind of like um where they would advertise Ireland, you know, the it's it's an Irish, what would you say, like, uh, I suppose. Have you ever heard of Fulch Ireland? No. <laughs> I think, don't really know. <laughs> anyway, it's got, they promote Ireland and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So anyway, uh, so we were sent on this trip. And so you had certain things we were taking out to Holy Island. But they also had said to the girl that was bringing us around, look, if you see anything else or you come across anything else, you know, let us know. So I was... Um, we got off the boat and I was speaking to the locals and the best thing to do is speak to the locals. Mm. And you say, so like, what's around here? and Where would you go? So they were telling us that down the road, there's a, a really old working forge that was down there. And then you had like Winty's Cottage across the road where mm. this woman just um, cleared out everything in the cottage and she just had, you know, tea and coffee and people would just go and it's free. She didn't charge anyone. Mm-hmm. It was just for people to go and in the morning and have a cup of tea and a chat right. and you know, stuff like this. But anyway, I photographed that guy. Uh, I went back there again and that guy was in there and I photographed him and I'd done videos. So I went through my phone and next of all, he goes, in the video that I was taking, he goes, oh yeah, sure. I was on that Credence thing in the show. So it was him. And I was like, oh my God, it was just like, it was brilliant to see. Do you know what I mean? Like there's so many characters and so many people out there that people don't know. And you know what I mean? Like the little parts of Ireland, you you. You know, you come to Ireland, you see the the usual, mm. you know, that that everybody knows. And you go to uh, Dingle and you go here and you go see Fungi. And mm. well, Fungi's gone now. He's not he's not around anymore. That's the, he went during there. During COVID, he was probably so used to people being around. Right. And because the boats went out, yeah. he disappeared and that was the end of him. But anyway, uh, so I just think it's nice to find the people of Ireland that mm. are really good characters as well as Ireland itself. So that is one thing on my list. I'm planning on doing it. Whether, you know, whether I do or not now, it's another story, but it's on the list. And then obviously working, just doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Fantastic. Cathy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. For... Thank you for asking. <laughs> oh, well, it's, absolutely, it's amazing. And there's been, there's been so many insights, you know, into the world of wedding photography and newborn photography. Oh, it's yeah. it's incredible. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure. We've come to the end of Camera Take Podcast, episode 124, uh, with our guest, Kathy Weatherston. Um, remember, if you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, uh, remember that you can hop over to YouTube where you'll find a fully fledged, uh, full colored version over there. Um, if you have made it to this point in the audio version, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure why you would, but you know, if you want to see us in the flesh, you know, head over to youtube.com forward slash camera shake. Um, yeah, if you have made it this far, well done. Excellent. We will be back next week. Remember to follow us on uh, Facebook. Join our Facebook group, uh, Camera Shake Podcast. Um, hit us up on TikTok, Instagram, all the good stuff. We'd love to see you there. See you again next week. Bye.